Now, TestGrill also off offers some bulk export and import options for your test cases. So the import button here allows you to import test cases from an XML file or a CSV. You can also export your test cases to XML or CSV and also Excel. The Excel export will create a CSV file, but it does have some additional um, formatting inside the file for Excel compatibility, but it will still be a CSV file. So if I choose to export my test cases to CSV, I can choose specific sections. You can hold Control or Command to click and select multiple sections. And you can also choose the columns which you would like to appear in your CSV file. If you have separated steps, you can also choose to include separated steps on separate rows in your test in your export file. This makes for easier importing of your test cases. I've already exported a file, so let's take a look at how this file looks and how I can import this file back into TestDrill. So here I have a CSV file. I have a title column, priority column, section, section depth, and the type column. So let's import these test cases. I've named them all imported test case just for, um, for visibility when I do import these test cases. There we go. All right, so when I import test cases using CSV, this import will always create new test cases. Importing from CSV does not support updating your test cases. It will always create new test cases. If you would like to update test cases through an import file, we recommend using an XML file instead. You can simply export your test cases to XML, ex edit any fields that you need to edit using a find and replace or any other, make any other change you need to make, and then re-import that using the import cases dialog. I'm not going to go into that. It's generally a straightforward process of editing your XML file and then re-importing it. Just be careful not to modify the XML structure so that the test cases will be imported properly. So let's look at the CSV dialog since this is a little more complex. The import from XML will be a straightforward import. Um, it only allows you to choose to add or update and fi find your file. The import from CSV has a few more options. So here, let's browse for my file. I have my sample import. These files are limited to 10 megabytes, so if you have large files um, greater than 10 megabytes, you will need to split these um, into multiple files. So with format and mapping, this is how you would map each column to test case fields. So we're just going to configure a new mapping. If, you've, if you are uploading a similar file over and over again, you can load a previously used mapping, which, and then that'll make the process a lot quicker. Uh, I'm going to import these. Uh, I'm just gonna leave this blank so it will create all new sections. I'm going to use UTF encoding. Generally, we would recommend using the UTF encoding, especially if you are using um, foreign characters in your file. Default uh, CSV delimiter. You can also use a couple of other separators here. The start row is one because I do have a header row. And I am going to import these into a single template. So these test cases, when importing, should have the same template. So I'm going to import these all into the webinar demo. There's a minor bug here. This arrow should be on the left, which we are working on fixing. So the test cases use a single row. If I was importing test cases with separated steps, I would select multiple rows and then cho choose where each test case changed. So sep each step would be on its own row then typically everything else on the line would be blank. So every time you've got reached a new title, it would detect that as a new test case. But everything in this import uses a single row. Now I map my columns. So priority, section, section depth, which is not available. Section depth is available in the export, but however, it is not available in an import. And then we will do the type. Let's go next. 
Remove any HTML tags if necessary. I always choose this, but it's not necessary. Um, actually, I don't have any HTML tags I need to worry about. So the priority, there's also a priority mapping. So all of my priorities, you know, medium matches medium and other matches other. So if you had a different system where you say you had priority, you just had a number value, you can match the number value to a test case field. Similarly with a type, you could match something. If it's not an exact match, you can still choose what you would like to correlate it to in test trail. Let's go next. So this provides me with a sample of what my test cases, what my fields will look like when I import them. So it gives me a sample of a few test cases. It's not going to show every test case in your file. If it does contain hundreds of test cases, it will just give you a few to, to review as a sample. So now import. I got a confirmation dialog that this was imported successfully, and I can download the configuration file, which is the mapping file for my columns if I need to do this, if I need to repeat this process for other files. So that's done. And now I look, I have my test cases imported in sections. Since it did not import the section hierarchy the way I would like it to, I can simply move my sections on the right. and nest them accordingly. Oops, I'm not doing it right. There we go. 